Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's move straight to Off the Press where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. I'm starting with the Punch newspapers and uh, we'll be introducing our guests uh, right after this uh, break. But let's, uh, or right after sharing the stories in the papers, let's uh, start with the Punch this morning. The big one, which is going to be on your screen in a bit, it says, yeah, Southern Senators turn against governors. National Assembly members clash. Senators say National Assembly, uh, NCC, to determine whether electronic transmission is feasible. Decision of the APC-led Senate, shocking. It undermines our electoral process, says the PDP. And also, uh, COVID-19, World Bank mobilizes $100 billion support fund for Nigeria and others. To accommodate fresh loans, federal government raises new borrowing limit to 6 trillion naira. NAVDAC approved Russian vaccine beneficiaries may be barred from Europe, says a virologist. Also, PIB passage deadlocked. Reps suspend consideration indefinitely. Certificate forgery. FCC chairman kicks as CSO demands resignation. And also, Brit Britain and firm seek Kanu's consent to take over case. Um, just a few others on the punch. Federal government declares Tuesday, Wednesday, Ida Kabir holiday. Uh, Amotekun raids Ondo nine clubs, impounds 40 vehicles. APC suspends 11 Lai Mohammed followers and stops offenders' uh, registration. Um, all right, we can also see here a uh, fake developer defrauds 100 pro prospective Lagos tenants of 500 million naira. I think I'll stop there on the punch this morning. Moving on now to the next newspaper, let's take a look at the nation. Senate dumps proposal on e-transmission of results. Electoral Act amendments passed by divided Senate House reconvenes today after rowdy session. 6A29 to Kano fighter jets depart U.S. for Nigeria. NAVDAQ OK's Russian Spanish vaccines emergency use. Policemen to others killed in Undo bank robbery. 60,000 unemployed youth registered with Lagos. CBN begins deduction of $2.1 billion budget support facility from state's allocation. COVID-19 Delta variant in Lagos. Government has awarded 800 contracts covering 13,000 kilometers of roads. Fashala says we have no housing deficit. Also in the Nation newspaper, Jaga Udo Doma Emenike others are Varsity's Governing Council's chairman. Tuesday, Wednesday are holidays. Why, why 774,000 job applicants have not been paid? On the Daily Trust newspapers, INEC stripped of sole power to transmit results electronically. Must get clearance from National Assembly and NCC. Reps fail to pass bill exchange blows. Action, uh, insult, action insult on Annex Independence, says uh, Jaga CSOs also. APC senators in haste to murder democracy, says the PDP. All right, Buhari also uh, Buhari flags off $1.2 billion Kano Kaduna rail project. NAC moves to endorse new fuel price. Customs shortlist 2,800 candidates for final screening. And six to Kano uh, aircraft depart U.S. for Nigeria, says uh, the Nigerian Air Force. Journalist, a policeman Okada Ryder killed as robbers attack Undo Bank. Yoruba Nation agitation, suicidal, says the Council of Elders. And um, I think we'll take, uh, that's all we'll take on the Daily Trust. On the Guardian newspaper, 2023 in jeopardy as Electoral Act Amendment splits National Assembly. Nigeria must restructure or go separate ways, Yoruba groups tells North. Federal government declares Tuesday, Wednesday, public holiday. Nigerians are starving, Kano Emir tells Buhari. Buhari approves 6.52 billion naira for ranching, unveils water road project in Katsina. Again, South South senators protest as Senate passes harmonized PIB. Senate approves Buhari's fresh $8.325 billion, 900 and 490 million pounds external loans request. Federal government to spend 47% of its four-year revenue on debt servicing. And lastly, on The Guardian, Ikiti re resident doctors begin indefinite strike. So those are the stories we're looking at this morning. Good morning to you, Mr. Gita Johnson. 
Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. Always uh, thanks for joining let's us. Start with the, let's start with the story that covers all the major headlines of the newspaper. Is the, is the attempt by the Senate to, 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 to touching democracy and to engage in what we call a civilian coup d'etat against the will of the people and against the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. INEP was established by the Estate Law of Nigeria and in Nigeria we said it's an independent national electoral commission. So if a body is independent, its operation should be independent, should not be subjected to the control of either NCC or clearance from the National, national Assembly. But what was, what was so unfortunate is the vote of some certain characters that we thought are progressive minded, that we thought that are, are, are nationalistic in their view, that we thought that would put politics above their own personal ambition. Um, and we saw how senators voted no, 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 no to the, to, to the surprise of, of, of many. Uh, for me, as a Republican, I'm disappointed by all the three senators representing Lagos because we all talked about wherever you are from. I am highly disappointed, totally disappointed, that the senators from Lagos State, all of them will vote no for in this age and time that they use their phone to transfer money. They don't need to go to the bank. In this digital age, in this information age, that people will be against, will be against uh, electronic transmission of, of results. What, what, what are they afraid of? What are they scared of? Of, 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 I'm sure that the do template gave them a cause for concern. An attempt has been made to read the 2023 election even before the election is, 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 is conducted. What, what, is the, what, is, what is the challenge for these senators concerning the electronic transmission of results? I, I, I don't seem to understand. And the unfortunate thing also is to see the way Southern senators Northern senators voted 99% against the bill, and then you see Southern senators also joining the truth. The governors met last week. You remember I told you that our governors are not doing enough when we had the governor's meeting, and we spoke about it. That how often do they meet with the senator from their state? How do they organize? Um, do they invite them to meeting? Do they have lunch with them and the rest of it? Do they engage in lobbying? They all met and said that they are in support of e voting. Majority of the southern senators voted against the position of their governors. It tells you something is wrong. It tells you that even the people that have gone to Abuja, once they get to Abuja, they are not representing the people again. And if truly democracy is governed of the people, by the people, for the people, at least these senators should bow to the wishes of the people. We want transparent democracy. We want we want governance that comes from the from the ballot box, not from the secret corner where some people will sit down and write the result, and those results will be taken to court, and it will take ages for courts to come to decision concerning that matter. Now you recall that there was a senator that was elected in Imo State. That senator, the 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 Victoria Minister said he became the result of the US. That person is still a senator of the Federal Republic. If we want, if we don't want to practice democracy, probably we should go back to other forms of government. Other than have democracy, uh, a, a pseudo democracy, whereby people that are in Abuja think that they can load it to us concerning whatever they feel they can do pattern. As far as I'm concerned, All this right. is not the end of the matter. Yeah, Jerry Johnson. This issue should be taken to the court. And I'm sure the Supreme Court will declare the action null and void because it is contrary to the instant provisions of the Constitution that gives Ireland the power to conduct an announced result. Well, I so, think there's still some time, you know, if there's going to be a court case, I'm, I'm sure there's still some time between now and 2023. Yeah, there, there will, there will. There, but there quick, should, quickly also there, speak on those who were should. absent from the vote. There's about 28, I believe, uh, uh, names who were absent. From the start, they, yeah. are, they, they are absent. Those, those ones should be recorded. If it is civilized, because this is something that has to do with entrenching democracy. We must entrench democracy. And if we have to entrench democracy, we must understand that supreme sovereignty comes from the people, and sovereignty resides in the constitution. And if you check the opening 
statement like that. He said, we the people of Nigeria. So it is what like this. Those, those ones, well, whether they like it or not, they're never visiting in gold. Um, I saw one one post of people that were, let's, let me mention it, mentioning, people that were in the forefront of student unionism, that fought against military military intervention uh, in Nigerian politics. Three of them are senators now. Three of them voted no. One is a senator from Ikiti State. And utterly, and some of them are doing this because of their 2023 ambitions. Some of them want to become governor. That's why they are doing it. And I want them to understand that they sold their birthright for a person of, 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 um, of, of, of meat. And they have lost that right because when, when the time comes, spotlight will be done on these characters, these characters that have disappointed destiny, that have disappointed their nation, that have disappointed their constituency, that have disappointed their family. The generation yet unborn will come to read about those that try to mortgage the democracy that we struggle to get in this in this in this country. Some people die because for this democracy. And now you, you are elected as a senator, an important issue will be taken. You are upset. You are upset. They should be excused. Totally. Mm. They are irresponsible. Utterly irresponsible and they are not fit to be called distinguished. They are not fit to be called distinguished. Okay, so um, many other top stories here from security to, you know, um, the third wave of, of COVID-19. Um, do we start with this one? There are about six A-29 Chicano fighter jets that have departed the U.S. for Nigeria. And that's on the front page of the Nation newspaper. So this is due to arrive Nigeria soon. Uh, how do you think this might boost Nigeria's anti-terrorism fight? We've been waiting. The one we have, what are they using to do? They want the resources that we have. What are we using to do? What are we doing concerning the welfare of those fighting the war? You don't only really fight the war um, using um, using using arms and ammunition. You also fight the war uh, um, encouraging and motivating those that are fighting the war. That's that's a critical component. It's a good development. Let's wait and see what it will do concerning that. That story leads me to a particular story that is very, very important, where the Emir of Kano, Adobayo, tells the president that Nigerians are starving. Nigerians are starving and that, that there's hunger in the land. If you don't deal with stomach infrastructure, even for the military, you cannot win the war on Boko Haram. So there's a need for government to come up with a policy that will address the issue of poverty and starvation in Nigeria. The cost of living is unbelievable. The standard of living is, is negative, it's below zero in Nigeria now. It's, everybody is survivor for the fittest. And it's, if such a statement will come from the MLM of Canada that was just, um, his coronation was just done last week, and he's saying that to government, he will it will tell you that there is a need for government to wake up to, to it's his responsibility. Other than that, they will be absent from National Assembly when they should take important decisions concerning electoral act, or they will be beating themselves, fighting over petroleum industrial industrial. What, what type of character are we electing into our National Assembly? What type of character? Hmm. They are fight there was a rugby session at the at the eyes of Red, at the eyes of Red yesterday. They had to postpone over PIB. Basic, you have five percent, you have thirty percent. Why can't we do things right? But the situation whereby the electoral process is modeled, where there is no party system, where the, the list of candidates are written in the in the sitting room of the national chairman or the bedroom of the national chairman or in the corner of one hotel, and that list is for them to hide and the people that actually participated in the primaries are denied in contesting the election. This is the type of society you have. And that's why you see senators from the southwest, particularly from the southwest. We'll be voting now, and they said, they I'm sure I want to be turning in his graveyard. And all those great progressive leaders from the southwest will be wondering what type of human being are representing us in the National Assembly in the southwest. Okay, I want us to tie that to this story on the Guardian newspaper. It says Nigeria must restructure or go separate ways. And that's according to groups telling the North. 
Um, so many other stories also um, about Nigerian unity. Um, this one by the Council of Elders on the Daily Trust. It says, Yoruba nation agitation suicidal. It seems we'll continue to have these conversations about Nigeria and if the state is viable up until 2023, don't you think? The same, the same story. The same story. See the way Daily Trust framed the story. It's different from the other newspaper framing of the story. The, the better newspaper said that Nigeria must restructure for us, otherwise we go our different ways. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, it's very, very important for us. Must we continue this structure that we have, this structure of governance that we have? Must we continue this structure of governance that we have? Must the exclusive list not be reviewed? So that some items of the exclusive list will be made concurrent. Some of, the, some of the items that are in the, in the, in the, in the, in the concurrent list should be taken to, to residualists where the state could legislate, could legislate on it. When you have people practicing federalism, each of the states in the union has its own constitution. Do we have that in Nigeria? No. We are practicing federalism on paper, but in principle we are practicing unitarianism. Because every, at the end of the month, they will go to Abuja to share further allocation to the federal government, to the 36 states and Abuja, and the 776 or 774 local government that we have in Nigeria. There's no country that operates on that basis. Power comes from the people from, 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 from the people to the center, not from the center to the people. If we continue with this structure, we, you see, Nigeria will not pay that. If it's about paying, all our problems will be solved. But it is principles that solve problems. And God is a God of principle. There are principles that will guarantee development, that will guarantee human capital development, that will guarantee economic development, that will guarantee political development. One of those principles guarantee political development is the electoral act, the system you put in place to facilitate free and fair election. So once you forget that system, there's no amount of prayer you put in place that will solve that problem. It's just a catastrophe waiting to happen. So right. if we don't do what we are supposed to do in terms of giving power to the local government, in terms of having democracy at the local government, in terms of giving power to the state, in terms of giving most of the resources back to the state and not to the federal, the bulk of federal allocation goes to the central government and not to the state, which is just one out of the confederating units of the nation. So if we don't change the structure of government, we will go back to school. There won't be any meaningful development. And when people deceive themselves that Nigeria can never break, they are deceiving themselves. Hmm. They are not students of history. If you are a student of history, you will know. There is a country called Yugoslavia. There is a country called Soviet Union. There is a country called Ethiopia. Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, you have a nature. There is a country called... So countries are broken. There is a country called Sanda, Sudan. Countries are broken up over and over until until 2000, until early 2000, Bakasi used to be part and parcel of Nigeria. Yes or no? Where is Bakasi today? Bakasi is part of Cameroon. So when people talk about that, it's because they don't do history. And that's why they remove history from the curriculum so that our children can learn from history because they want to manipulate people. But if you're a student of European history, if you're a student of African history, you will know that over time, nations emerge out of nation states. All right. Nations emerge out of nation states. So the emergence of new nation in Nigeria is just a matter of time. If we don't do what we are supposed to do, if we don't give equal opportunity, if there's no fairness, if there's no justice, if there's no equity in the nation, I can assure you, it might not be in our own lifetime. But right. it's just a matter of time. It will happen. J.D. Johnson, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you uh, for this opportunity. Um, so, All right. let me just... Thank you very much. All right. I wish you an interesting weekend ahead. All right, sir. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we're going on a short break. When we come back, we're moving um, back in time, you know, a little bit of history yes. uh, to share with you. I'm going back to the year 1935, what happened on this day. And I'm going to the year 2013 to share something uh, very sad that occurred in Asia. Do stay with us.